Hello, I'm Chris Rokosh, and this is the third of a four-part video series titled Legal Issues in Nursing, Empowering Nurses with Medical Legal Knowledge. In this video, you will learn about the four factors necessary to prove nursing negligence lawsuits. In almost all medical malpractice cases, the responsibility lies with the patient or the plaintiff and their lawyer to prove, on a balance of probabilities, meaning 50% plus one, that there was a breach in the standard of care and that that breach in the standard of care resulted in an injury or loss. More specifically, in order for nursing negligence cases to be successful, the following four factors must be proven. Firstly, that the nurse had an obligation or a duty to provide care. Second, that the nurse breached the accepted standard of care or standard of practice. Third, that the patient suffered an injury or a loss. And fourth, that the injuries were a direct result or caused by the breach in the standard of care. Let's learn more about these four areas. The duty. The lawyer for the plaintiff is required to prove that the nurse being sued had a duty to provide care. This is typically a fairly easy and straightforward legal task. For instance, a nurse who works in a healthcare facility is responsible or has a duty to provide care to the patient or patients that she is assigned to on any given day. In some cases, charge nurses, student nurses, and break relief nurses are also viewed as having a duty to provide care. Self-employed nurses have a duty once they have entered into a verbal or written contract to provide nursing services. The breach in the standard of care. The lawyer must also prove that there was a breach in the standard of care or standard of practice. The nurse's actions will be judged by or measured against what another reasonably prudent or sensible nurse would have done in that same situation and in the same year as the event occurred. Remember that the definition of nursing negligence is the failure to act as a reasonably prudent nurse would have acted under the same or similar circumstances. When determining negligence, the courts will ask this question. What would a reasonably prudent or sensible nurse with like training and experience have done in this situation? For example, the care provided by an emergency room nurse with 10 years of experience and two years of education would be compared to what another nurse with the same experience and training would be expected to provide. If upon review of the nursing care, it is determined that the nurse's actions were in accordance with the accepted standards of care, with policies and procedures, then the standard of care may be considered to be met. The result may be a failure to prove nursing negligence and a dismissal of the lawsuit against the nurse. Alternatively, if it is deemed that the nurse's actions did not meet the standard of care, he or she may be found negligent and the lawsuit against them may proceed. This is why it is so critically important for all nurses to be familiar with the current standards of practice, employer policies, evidence-based practice, and best practice guidelines. If the policies currently used in your facility or institution are outdated or not in keeping with current standards of care, it's considered part of your nursing responsibility to take an active role in updating them. Updating policies based on best available evidence improves care, and benefits everyone, patients, nurses, and employers. The patient suffers an injury. Remember that determining negligence is based on four factors. The third is that the patient must have suffered an injury as a direct result of the care they received. Damages are not typically awarded when the patient fully recovers from their injury, when feelings were hurt, or when patients were embarrassed or angered by the events. Damages are also not typically awarded for known complications to medical procedures, such as a post-operative infection from which the patient fully recovers, or if the breach in the standard of care did not result in injury. An example of a breach in the standard of care which does not result in injury is when a nurse gives a patient aspirin when Tylenol was ordered, but the patient does not suffer an adverse reaction. Even though the nurse clearly made a medication error, and breach the standard of care, the patient did not suffer an injury and would likely not have a viable lawsuit. On the other hand, if the nurse gave aspirin when the patient was highly allergic to it 
and it resulted in an injury or death to the patient, the breach in the standard of care could serve as the basis of a viable malpractice or nursing negligence lawsuit. Causation. The last factor in determining negligence is causation. If it is determined that there was a duty, that there was a breach in the standard of care, and that the patient sustained an injury, the lawyer must then prove two things. That the breach in the standard of care directly caused or contributed to the injury, and that the injury or loss was reasonably foreseeable. In some cases, causation is easy to prove, such as when the doctor cuts off the wrong leg during surgery. There is no question that the injury, the loss of the leg, is due to the breach in the standard of care, the failure to confirm which leg was to be operated on. But in many cases, causation is difficult to prove because many, many factors can affect health outcomes. For instance, in a case alleging that a doctor failed to diagnose cancer in a patient who eventually dies, it is challenging to prove that earlier diagnosis would have led to a longer life or that the treatment would have been successful, or that the patient wouldn't have died anyway from some other disease they were suffering from, such as high blood pressure or diabetes. In these cases, proving causation would be difficult. Let's take a look at a mini case study which outlines these four factors and brings clarity to how they might be proved. Nurse Michael Campbell worked on an orthopedic unit and was assigned to care for Mr. Smith. Because Nurse Campbell was providing patient care at work, he had a duty. Mr. Smith had recently been admitted to the orthopedic unit following surgical repair of a fractured hip. Mr. Smith had dementia, was often confused, and continually tried to get out of bed without assistance. One morning, Nurse Campbell gave Mr. Smith a bed bath and then left the bedside to empty water from the wash basin in the bathroom sink. He failed to ensure that the side rails were put up. This could be considered a breach in the standard of care in some situations. The plaintiff's lawyer will argue that a prudent nurse would have recognized the risk of Mr. Smith falling and would have put the bed rails up. Mr. Smith rolled over and fell out of bed onto the floor. He suffered significant bleeding in his brain, which required surgery and resulted in neurological damage. This would be considered the injury. In order for the lawsuit to be successful against Nurse Campbell, Mr. Smith's lawyer must prove that the breach in the standard of care, leaving the bedside of a confused patient with the side rails down, led to Mr. Smith's head injury, which was a subdural hematoma, and that the head injury was the source of Mr. Smith's severe neurological damage. This is causation. In review, in order for a nurse to be found negligent, either partially or wholly, they must have had a duty to provide care. The care they provided must have been deemed to fall below the expected standard of care. The patient must have suffered an injury or a loss, and the injury or loss must have been a direct result of the breach in the standard of care.